Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will go local plant shopping at a local nursery called Plant Keeper Incorporated in the heart of Dallas, Texas. This is a special nursery just because this nursery features a lot of aeroids that a lot of um, plant nurseries in Dallas do not feature. As always, please hit the like button to help me out on this channel. And if you haven't already, please um, follow me on Instagram at Growfolds. Thank you for tuning in. But as you can see, I am driving down from North Dallas to go to this plant nursery. I love Plant Keeper Incorporated. It was originally called Scape Supply and it is run by my good friend Garen. So um, I hope you guys like this tour. We did um, a plant video a couple weeks back and there was such a good reception on it. So I wanted to see what type of restock they have. My Plant Foldies, if you guys are new, um, My Plant Foldies is the name I call my viewers and subscribers. So welcome to the channel if you're new to this. Um, channel I do big box store plant shopping videos but recently I've been also doing local nurseries in the Dallas Fort Worth area as you can see we are about to go to Plant Keeper Incorporated and um, Garen was right they did get a restock so you can see that they are unloading a truck full of beautiful plants I am assuming this plant nursery offers a lot of aeroids and just massive plants that no other plant uh, nursery in Dallas currently offers so I'm really excited to show you guys around Plant Keeper Incorporated um, when you walk in you will see that this is a secret jungle paradise um, and I really hope if you ever visit Dallas or um, if you're a Dallas local that you will come in here and check this out but look at this right here right off the bat you've got tons and tons of plants to look at um, I've been visiting this plant nursery for the last four years and it is a very unique one just because of how they styled the plant what I like about this plant nursery is the sheer square footage of it. There is so much space to be able to house um, a lot of these larger plants. And, you know, Garen, my good friend that manages this plant nursery, um, let me know that they were having a restock. We already did a video of plant nursery tours. So if you haven't already, please check that out in my videos um, where we were able to see a philodendron pink princess, an epipremnum arium neon pothos growing up a totem that is about six feet tall. And as you can see, they are uh, later on today, I will um, show you how large that the leaves get when aeroids are allowed to actually grow up a pole. Oftentimes we go big box store plant shopping and we see these in like little hanging baskets. But the true beauty is when you allow plants to grow up a pole, especially aeroids. Um, you can see that they have some beautiful Monstera deliciosos right over there. And we've got um, a Ficus Elastica Ruby or is that a Taniki? Um, and then we just have a lot of plants to look at and I don't even know where to start. I just really wanted to show you guys just the beginning portion of this plant nursery. I'm really excited to show you some of the other plants that they received on a totem. I think seeing these plants and being able to get them sourced into this plant nursery, these plants that are on a totem is an awesome um, feature. Most plant nurseries so far in the Dallas market um, don't have large plants growing up a totem. So it's really interesting to see that. But alongside with that, you know, this is a plant nursery that does a lot of business with corporate offices um, just different businesses and just um, people who have large spaces however they are open to pretty much anybody who loves plants um, I love the fact that this plant nursery does sell and is open to anybody that loves plants but the thing about it is they are not going to sell these beautiful plants to somebody that's just going to kill them um, this is not one of those um, plant nurseries that you can go as if you were to go to a big box or buy a plant and kill them they will educate you about the plant care tips and really vet out the people that go in here to shop for plants so just fyi you know i'm not speaking um on behalf of garen and their staff i'm literally just going by experience and i really appreciate that because if you look over here there's just so many plants to look at and you know when you go big box store plant shopping um, these big box store plants, there's just they're just produced in mass numbers that a lot of times the actual big box store doesn't really care about the plant health. They just end up dying or just end up in the trash. This nursery, I've seen a lot of plants here over the years just grow into massive plants. Like take a look at this Monstera Thai constellation huge monstera tie constellation so if you're in the market for that you can go to plant keeper inc and they just have large ficus liratas you can see right over there they have a huge
huge um, bird of paradise. They've still got some poinsettias there. Really love that. And if you look over here, I really like this. This is a philodendron sanadu. Look at how um, lush and full this is. And I really love how the leaves have that, um, that jigsaw um, texture on it. I really like that a lot. And it's just a green plant. You know, some people or actually the majority of houseplant collectors always look for the variegated plant. But you know, there is just a lot of greenery here and there's um, much to be said about green plants. Honestly, green plants like this bird of paradise are just a little bit more hardy than variegated plants. Um, and if you look over here, they've got some large size ZZ plants. So if you're looking for an easy care plant, ZZs are there. And then when they have a ficus, I would say this is a ficus elastica burgundy. We've got some bromeliads right over here, beautiful orange color. And then we've got a lot more poinsettias right over here. Um, love me some poinsettias. I'm looking for a variegated one to just grow year round. But I did want to pan over here. Look at how large these ZZs are. I mean, how many places do you find large ZZ plants like that? And then when you pan over there, there's just more plants um, to take a look at. It would take a long time for me to literally film every single plant just because because every time I go here, they have something new. And I do love this. Where do you find large forms of um, fernwood Sansevieria? This is one of my favorite Sansevierias because it's probably one of the easiest Sansevierias to take care of. Um, I really like the texture of it. And then just the fact that it's um, that large is already great. And look at how beautiful this palm right over here is. It's massive. Um, again, every time you walk into Plant Keeper, it really does feel like you are in a jungle. And look at how beautiful and healthy these Monstera Deliciosas are. And if you look here, look at how large these um, Aurelia are. So I rescued a variegated Aurelia at Lowe's, but you can see that they can get really large. And then for my plant foldies, or what I call my viewers, look at these Dracaenas right over here. Um, super cool. I think this is a Dracaena tornado, but just in a larger cane form. Um, let me know in the comments if that is the correct plant ID. I'm not an expert, and I actually didn't get in touch with Garen about a lot of these plant IDs. So if there are some mistakes, I apologize, guys. Guys, plant keeper I'm really just trying to show you guys um, your beautiful plant nursery like look over this right over here have you guys ever seen a ficus Audrey in this tree form this is it's probably 20 feet tall and that's just amazing and look at how beautiful this bird of paradise is right over here I wish I could grow them but if you thought Diefenbachia were large at Walmart, Lowe's, or Home Depot, take a look at those right over there and look at the variegation. So this is a Diefenbachia Sublime. Look at that variegation. Look at how large the leaves are. Look at how healthy the leaves are. Now with Diefenbachia, care tips for Diefenbachia, again, they require a lot of bright indirect light. Um, you know, you have to, don't overwater them, obviously. And as far as um, pests, they are susceptible to spider mites, so just be careful with that and just double check your um, Diefenbachia. They are toxic, so they're not really pet friendly, but if you are able to take care of a Diefenbachia, look at the um, just the size it could get. So all of those Diefenbachia you see at Walmart or any big box stores, they can get this large right here. So yeah, this is a Diefenbachia Sublime. I wish I had the space in my home to be able to grow something massive like this, but that is just gorgeous. And that's the thing about these plants. When you see all of these um, large plants, when you think about all of the small plants that you buy at a big box store, if you give it the right care, the right lighting conditions, the right love for the plant, you can get a massive plant like these right over here. Like look at these palms in the corner. So like, I, I don't even know how they do this. And apparently Garen says that this is really just a two man operation. So um, I think it's absolutely amazing that they're able to take care of all of these plants. And I mean, look at this. This is a ficus Audrey. I have one, but it's definitely not this size. It, this is a full blown tree that is gonna be growing indoors. Now with ficus Audrey, again, you definitely need to provide it with a lot of bright indirect light. Um, I've never seen it this size before. And for anybody who's curious about the plant, um, plant, plant, plant pricing, sorry, plant pricing. I'm not really going to be discussing plant pricing just because I'm not 100% sure about what the plant prices are. However, if you do visit Plant Keeper Incorporated or ask Garen via um, Instagram, he can let you know what the pl pricing is. I will say their pl um, plant pricing is very much um, comparable to all of the plant nurseries in Dallas, sometimes even more cost effective. But I did want to show you this ficus, Audrey. Look at that trunk and root system. 
I can tell that this plant, this ficus audrey right here has been growing for quite some time. And so this is the reason why um, I love Plant Keeper. They will not just sell this plant for somebody to just put in their home or something and let it die because again we have to have respect for the plants the plants it took a while for plants to be grown so even though like big box stores and i i hate to sound like i'm like you know being negative towards big box stores but the thing about it is how many times do we see plants really decline like they look so beautiful when they get restocked but then give it about three weeks and you can see the plants are either dying because they're underwatered, overwatered, or some type of pest has taken over them and they end up in the trash at plant keeper that is never ever going to be the case there um they use a lot of natural methods to make sure that they um control their pests they even have geckos living here i did want to show you this um palm right here too look at that that is just awesome it makes me want to actually grow a palm when you see how large they get but i can't get over the ficus um audrey but right over here um i did want to show you some more of these totems so they just got some totems right over here um this plant right over here is a new one on a totem it looks like a syngonium but it is some type of philodendron so i did want to show you that look at the trilobes of the leaves really gorgeous and like i said again with most aeroids a lot of them want to attach onto like a pole they're considered epiphytes so that means they're just looking for something to attach to and once they do once their aerial roots start to wrap on something um they're their roots are able to their aerial roots are able to get more um i guess more nutrients and that's what allows the leaves to actually get large like this and i mean look at this this is awesome i love the totem look and just the fact that these little moss poles we see that you know people grow it's nowhere near that type of massive um you know plant totem right over there and then we have some more ficus audrey right over here but in between the ficus audrey and i literally feel like i'm like crawling through a jungle have you guys ever seen this a, a philodendron micans totem that is about six feet tall it's already grown past the um the totem but look at how large the leaves are on this um philodendron micans love philodendron micans but you, when you see a philodendron micans you'll see it in like a four inch planter or like a six inch planter sometimes in a hanging basket but nowhere do we ever really see philodendron micans this large with these large leaves so again for anybody who's um, starting to grow you know house plants aeroids philodendron just know that the few the, the the sheer beauty or the maximum beauty potential is when you allow your plant to grow up a pole or a totem so you can see from the bottom that the leaves are a little bit smaller but as it continues to grow up the totem it gets large and i just really think it's cool that i was able to like see a philodendron micans on a totem i was able to see a philodendron cordatum on a totem but the micans version is awesome and um i i still just can't get over this you know ficus um ficus audrey look at the trunk look at the aerial roots it is a full-blown tree and you know that's one that i think you i've grown it in full outdoor um sun and in texas and it didn't die so not 100 percent sure what this plant totem is right over here i'm gonna try to look for the plant id but um nonetheless it is a super um beautiful plant as well i love how the leaves are very narrow and it's just crawled up the pole um i did want to show you guys a plant that i gifted garen a while back it was a philodendron um ghost a mint ghost but um you can see that it's not as ghostly anymore but i do like the fact that even over the years garen has been able to take care of this plant and it was such a small plant i think it was in a three inch um planter and now it's grown he doesn't have it growing up a pole but i'm telling you if this were to grow up a pole these leaves will even um get larger and mature but look at how beautiful that is and i love the fact that these leaves are yellowish they're not unhealthy they're just um sun stress and then you can see the aerial roots have actually just attached down back into the soil so that's really cool i did want to show you that so um back then just a little history on how i ended up um, being you know an avid like customer for plant keeper incorporated i just happened to google a bunch of plant nurseries and i happened to find this one on the way down to dallas 
and I walked in there with my camera filming and that's how I met Garen and like just over the years we've been able to correspond and I just really like this um, plant nursery. It's definitely not um, one of those nurseries that are bougie. It's really chill. You can talk to a lot of the um, customers there. Garen is somebody that can really teach you a lot about plants. And speaking about plants, look at this. I believe this is a Monstera pinapartata that has um, grown up a totem, but look at how those aerial roots have literally wrapped around the totem and look at how large these leaves are. Um, you will never really see Monstera this large on a totem um, offered at a nursery, a plant nursery. Like I really am trying to find plant nurseries in Dallas that carry it. You know, when I think of like a local plant nursery chain like Callaway's, sometimes they'll have totems, but nowhere near that. Actually, I got the wrong um, um, plant ID. It is not a Pinapartitum. It is another type of Monstera that I will flash. Um, once I'm done editing this video, I'll, I'll try to get as many of the plant IDs, but look at how large this is. And you can actually take some of these, um, these um, nodes and actually propagate them just because at this point it's grown up the pole and now it's trailing back down. But look at how nice that um, totem is. My plant foldies and the viewers that are watching this live in the live chat, let me know what you think. Um, I believe you can ask Garen if he does hop on the chat what he thinks about these um, plants and the plant, um, you know, like maybe pricing and whatnot. But I did want to show you this. This one is a another um, another totem, a six um, six feet totem um, with another aeroid right over here. Look at how beautiful that is. Anybody else would probably think this was kind of like a syngonium, but this is not a syngonium. But again, if you grow a syngonium on a totem, it will be as beautiful as these um plants right here so that's one thing I want to do I actually want to get a bunch of like syngonium elbows cuttings and let them just grow up a totem I'm trying to do that with my um, philodendron pink princess which is more reverted it was my original one but I do like the lar lar you know the dark foliage but as you can see right over here we've got some beautiful totems of you know plant totems right here and I heard that they will be getting more but I know a lot of people have never really seen this have you ever seen a um, Hoya Carii grown up a six inch, uh, not a six inch, six feet totem. Look at how beautiful this Hoya is. So when somebody had asked, one of my subscribers asked if, you know, it was possible to grow Hoya up a totem or some type of moss pole, and it is, because look at this, this um, Hoya has attached onto this totem and you can see that the heart shaped leaves have basically gotten larger as it crawls up the totem and i am just blown away with that the thing about it is i'm got, i've got this on film but you really have to see how massive and gorgeous these plants are in real life so again if you're able to make a visit down to um, plant keeper incorporated it is in downtown dallas you just have to get on um, the dallas north tollway if you're traveling from up north very accessible plant um, shop and you can see plants like this like this hoya carii is amazing like if i had the space i would definitely buy this totem right here like who would not want to buy a totem of hoya carii and then this is actually being shot for one of my plant foldies kathy i know you guys you're always on the live chats i really hope you enjoyed this hoya carii um i really wanted to get this footage for you i believe there is another totem like this as well but um for my international viewers or my viewers that are not in the dallas fort worth area Please let me know in the comments what you think about the local plant nurseries in Dallas, specifically Plant Keeper Incorporated. They do have an Instagram, so please follow them. And then you can also add Garen um, on Instagram as well. He's an amazing guy that just can give us a lot of plant information. But yes, the, um, the Hoya Carii on a totem, that is a rare sight to ever really see. And I would love to be able to see a Hoya Carii Variegata on a totem like this. That would just be mind blowing. But, um, you know, you think about it, it's val you know, Valentine's Day was just around the corner and you can see all of the beautiful heart shaped leaves on um, the Hoya Carii. I hope that whoever buys this Hoya Carii totem will definitely take care of them because this um, plant probably took quite a bit to grow that size. So. I'm gonna go ahead and spin around here and there is another Hoya Carii um, right over here for us to take a look at. Look at how gorgeous this Hoya Carii is. It has completely 
um, crawled up the totem and it's fully attached. You can see how beautiful the leaves are. Um, if you see this in person, the leaves are just so large and really massive. And I just, there's just so many adjectives I want to say. All I know is this is freaking amazing. And I'm so glad that I was able to see this. When Garen told me that they were getting some more totems, one that was going to be a Hoya, uh, a Hoya um, totem. I was just stoked. So um, definitely take a look at that. And then for my Hoya lovers, my plant foldies, here is a Hoya compacta that Garen and Plant um, Keeper Incorporated has been growing for a long time. I remember when this was not even trailing and you can see that it is trailing now. Look at how large the um, the Hoya is. So like, I definitely want to get a Hoya compacta variegata. Um, I think it's really nice. I'm just aware, you know, worried about getting mealybugs because can you imagine trying to treat um, Hoya compacta for mealybugs? And then this one right here is a variegated devil's backbone. So it's some type of succulent, but I do like the variegated version. These are very easy to propagate too. All you have to do is snip it, stick it in water, and it will root. And then right over here, we have another Hoya hanging basket. This one is a Hoya um, Carnosa Crimson Queen, I believe. So I might have that plant ID wrong. If I do, please correct me in the comments, but that is beautiful as well. So that's the thing about Plant Keeper. They've got all sorts of plants. They've got Hoyas, they've got Aeroids, they've got this gorgeous um, Aurelia right over there. And then um, we've got some more massive plants right over here. Like look at that big plant in the background. I can't really pronounce the plant ID name. So I'm just going to put that in the subtitles. But you can see we have some more... Um, what is it some more aurelia i'm gonna walk over here and you can see that there is another totem i'll get to that in a second but look at how large that um, plant is that's absolutely stunning people say that it is a palm it is not so i'm just going to give you guys the plant id when i edit this video and just give you guys the subtitle so plant foldies what do you guys think so far about plant keeper incorporated i definitely wanted to make sure i took my time this time around so this will be a longer video but that's because i wanted to talk through some of the plants and really show you that um, but right over here is another totem of a philodendron cordatum so this is the green just a regular green version of like a philodendron um, heteraceum like if you look at philodendron brazil philodendron rio the, it's in the same um family but you can see this is just a green version however look at how large the leaves are for that i really really like that totem it's just um absolutely stunning and then we have some more um aurelia right over here this one is um got a different type of texture to the leaves i really like that a lot i'm not 100 percent sure what type of aurelia it is but i do like the fact that aurelia are pretty much you know they can grow mature they, they can mature like this and you can see how like even then the stems kind of twist and turn that's really cool and then for all of our dracenas janet um craig compacta but look at janet craig compacta mature version so it starts to cane up and grow up like that you you see that often at like walmart in like a six inch planter and i did want to show you this aurelia i'm not 100 percent sure what this aurelia is but i do like the subtle green on green variegation of this aurelia i hope my variegated aurelia that i rescued from lowe's for just a dollar will eventually grow like this with over time um i am happy to share that my um rescue of that um, Aurelia variegated Aurelia um, has started to show two new leaves to unfurl so I feel like it's it's on its way to starting to thrive if that makes any sense but you can see right over here they've got some um, more Brantianums Philodendron Brantianums on totems these are not as tall as a six inch I mean a six inch six feet ones but nonetheless look at these three or I think four feet um, Brantianums look at how large the leaves are look at the metallic sheen it has um where do you find this guys right where would you ever find this i i venture to ask for anybody who has local plant nurseries in their area aside from florida because obviously a lot of these plants did come from florida where do you find these and would you grow a totem like this like look at that new leaf unfurling it's got a copper bronze look about it and i just love it i have a very small trailing um philodendron brantianum in my kitchen I want these leaves like I literally want these leaves and I just wish that um, anybody who is growing you know a 
philodendron brantianum on like a moss pole i hope someday that it will look like this now with philodendron brantianum they do require a little bit more hum higher humidity and like i would say plant keeper definitely has all of the right conditions to be able to grow these beautiful tropical plants humidity levels are great lots of bright indirect light and there's just a lot of space here as well so um i really love this philodendron branti um brantianum on a totem um plant foliage let me know what you think what what you guys think so far about the totems and just the plants you're seeing so far are there any plants you would want to see um be carried at plant keeper incorporated please leave that in the comments so i can actually give that feedback to garen and the team um just because we want to make sure that we can get even more plants they've got many sources and then this is another plant this is another type of monster at insonia i got um garen as a gift um and he's been able to grow it and get him to grow up a little pole and it's actually gotten such large leaves so i really like that but um, what else do we have here? So we have another totem and then we have another um, Dracaena marginata, but look at those Dracaena marginatas. When they get that large, they are just stunning. A lot of these plants are really specimen um, piece plants. Like these plants, even though you can see these in like very juvenile forms at like a big box store, like I see this um, Dracaena marginata like at Home Depot, Lowe's, or even Walmart, but nowhere near the size and um you know the size of these plants but once they start to really get large like this look at how beautiful like the subtle pink gets hit by the light and then look at this epipremnum arium neon pothos on a totem look at how large the leaves are they're larger than my hand can you imagine that this plant actually was like the hanging baskets that you see of neon pothos or just neon pothos in like a three to four inch planter look at what the maximum potential is of this plant and that's actually not the maximum potential because even though it's already gotten larger leaves did you know that ne neon pothos or pothos in general as they grow, grow up taller on a moss pole a totem pole or attach themselves on some type of tree or wall the higher it gets the larger the leaves gets and eventually they start to fenestrate which is amazing so like if this started to fenestrate you would you know mistaken it as like a monstera full aurea where it's just yellow um neon yellow leaves that would be so amazing and then right over here just the contrast of having really robust round leaves next to um the dracaena marginata is really nice and then right over here this looks like a Diefenbachia sparkle, but I could be wrong. But what I do like about it is just the green on green variegation, the very just electrifying colors of this um, Diefenbachia. Not 100% sure if this is a Diefenbachia sparkle, but nonetheless, you can see that these Diefenbachia are way larger than what a big box store can give you. And even just a lot of the plant nurseries in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, there's just so many large plants here. And I'm glad that, you know, plant keeper can source them because sometimes you don't want to take the time to actually grow a plant this large it takes time to grow these plants so if you want instant gratification and you want a large plant for like a large base you just need to go over to plant keeper and they will take care of you they also deliver too so if you do want to buy a plant according to garen they do have a delivery fee and installation fee so it's actually all on the website if you go to plant Inc, um, plantkeeperinc.com you can get all those details as well or just um, stop by but you can see there is another totem right over here this one is another um, philodendron this is a philodendron lemon lime so look at how large these leaves are they're absolutely stunning and look at how tall it is it looks like a legitimate just totem right like i love the fact that there's so many cuttings so many plants that are just wrapped around this totem and look at the leaves i love neon yellow leaves on plants like i want to collect that alongside with like black um or dark foliage plants that's just really awesome and then they have some more monsteras there we've got even more monstera deliciosas right over here we've got some type of dracaena right over here um I am not 100% sure what type of Dracaena this is, but nonetheless, I love the green on green variegation. And then obviously look at how beautiful these Monstera Deliciosas are here. Um, I would say Plant Keeper Inc. Just, it's just on another level. Like look at this right over here 
beautiful looking totem. This totem is actually a totem of Philodendron Squamiferum. Like look at how large the leaves are on this Philodendron Squamiferum. It's also on a six inch um, totem, I mean, six, not six inch, six feet totem. And look at how, look at the fuzzy petioles of this um, Squamiferum, really love that. I've actually seen a variegated um, Squamiferum it would cost somebody an arm and a leg, but that's interesting. But nonetheless, look at how, even though this is just a typical green plant, when it actually grows to its you know full potential, look at how gorgeous it is. Um, when I pan away, it looks like we are in some type of tropical jungle. And that's the thing about just visiting Plant Keeper. Obviously, you want to make sure you're um, picking up plants because they have a variety of plants to pick from. And I'm just showing you guys a lot of the large specimen plants. They have smaller plants that are definitely going to fit your home. But it's just nice to be able to walk around and really enjoy what the plants could, you know, potentially look like in their native, their native habitats. Um, like this right here, this philodendron squamiferum, it definitely is a philodendron that wants to attach on something, whether it's a tree, some type of wall, some type of cliff, that's when they start to really fenestrate and actually get large. Um, like look at that neon pothos right over there. That, I mean, if somebody were to tell you that that is a, um, a pothos, a lot of people would be like, are you serious? Because most neon pothos or just most pothos in general um, are never really grown up um, a pole like that. And everybody always thought that this philodendron was a philodendron black cardinal, but this is actually, according to Garen, a philodendron red imperial. Look at how gorgeous this is. I've seen this plant over the years and it has just gotten massive. Like I really wish I could buy this philodendron. Like plant um, foldies, what do you think? Would you add this dark foliage plant into your plant collection? It is absolutely stunning. It would be one of those plants that would be really good in like a spherical type planter or an oval shaped type planter. Just really nice to look at. And then look at this right over here. This is an Aglonema stripes next to an Aglonema golden Madonna. So I'm really glad that they were able to get some of these larger specimens of Aglonema because here's the thing about Aglonema. Aglonema take a while to go. They're really slow growing to just to be able to get something this size, this large is amazing at Plant Keeper. Again, as far as pricing, that's something that you will have to just check out when you actually visit the plant nursery or you can just ask Garen um, questions to see how much this plant pricing is. They are still um, within the range of all of the other plant nurseries, sometimes even more cost effective. So that's just me speaking on four years of experience dealing with this plant nursery. Right over here is an Aglonema green bowl. Really um, like that one. I actually ended up picking up this one. Um, I got a really good price for it and it's a beautiful Aglonema. It is an Aglonema hybrid, obviously, but I just, you know, did my research and apparently it is an Aglonema green bowl. And then right over here, we have have a um, Aglonema stripes. Really glad that they got the Aglonema stripes because I think it's one of those Aglonemas that you have, at least I haven't seen in a big box um, store and I'm glad that they had that available. And then right over here, although the Aglonema stripes looks a little similar, you can see that this is the Aglonema Golden Madonna. Um, and the really big difference is there is a little bit of subtle yellow um, variegation on the leaves, but the stems are a stark white love me some white stem plants and this is the reason why i love me some aglonema so for those aglonema that you see like in trending tropicals six inch planters when you let them grow and mature they can get that large and that is amazing um, i'm gonna pan over here and just show you some more plants they've just got so many right over here and then this is the philodendron brantianum that i was talking about in a six feet um, totem look at that look at how large the leaves are here like I wish I could buy this I would totally put it in my home I just don't really have the space but again um, all the leaves just look like metal plates like that's just amazing and again I really want it, you plan full these to go check out this plant nursery so if you are a local um, plant you know a DFW plant lover definitely check out this nursery if you haven't already and if you are visiting Dallas for some reason and you're out of state or out of the country definitely make time to check out Plant Keeper Incorporated um, their hours are pre um, are nice they they open at nine so you can check them up as early as nine but look at this I just want to spin around here and show you how beautiful this philodendron brantianum on a totem is um, I, I can't get over the leaves and just the color. 
So care tips for philodendron brantianum, obviously bright indirect light. They do require um, higher levels of humidity. As far as water, you don't want it to dry out completely, but you also don't want to overwater. So it can be a little bit tricky, but look at the philodendron brantianum. It is a philodendron that definitely wants to attach onto something. So the best way is to either get like a moss pole, some type of trellis or some type of totem to let it attach. And then if you do, over time you will get such a beautiful plant like this like i hope that whoever ends up buying this plant um, definitely takes care of it it is a work of art um, definitely not something you would see on a normal basis at a plant store and that's the reason why plant keeper incorporated it is awesome you know i went and visited plants and planters as well they've got some large plants on um, just plant keeper right now is most likely the only plant nursery that i've seen in the dallas market that carry totems and i really hope that more plant nurseries uh, make these available because look at that like what would you do if you end up getting a philodendron br a brantianum like that that's just amazing and then we have this um philodendron again on a um totem this one's in a four feet totem but nonetheless they look like you know mature syngonium um syngonium plants but it's not a syngonium i just like the trilobes on the leaves i love that it's just a green um plant and that's cool and you can see right um if you look straight ahead that aglonema green bowl is just um a, a highlighter for all of the other green plants that we have right over here but um I, I'm just speechless right now. I, I just I just love showing off this beautiful plant nursery. It makes me proud to say that Dallas definitely has some great plant nurseries. And you can see right over here, this is a philodendron betaphylum. Um, and it, look at how beautiful that is. It is on a six feet totem as well and you can see how large the leaves um get i know that um costa farms has released the philodendron golden and violin which is basically the aurea form of this um betaphylum but look at how beautiful that is right there and then they've got a cute kitty cat i don't know his name though but he also hangs out at plant keeper and i just wanted to show you guys this right over here look at how large the leaves have gotten and as it crawls up this totem it gets larger and larger so I don't know. I, 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 I'm almost at a loss for words just even watching the playback and looking at these plants. They just bring me so much joy just because you really do feel like you are in a jungle. Like look at this massive Monstera Thai constellation. Look at the fenestration on the leaves. Look at how beautiful the variegation is on this Monstera Thai constellation. Can you imagine how long it took for this plant to grow? And that's why like whenever we go to a big box store or just when you buy a plant, really consider your your lighting conditions at your home how much time you have invested to do um the plant upkeep like watering checking for pests having to check the soil and just overall um just the types of plants and um that you already have around oftentimes we just want to buy every single plant but it's not always the best case where you really have to evaluate what your environment looks like for the plants because i mean obviously if you don't give them the right lighting conditions for instance they're not going to thrive or they're going to end up dying and then you don't really want to kill a plant because if you kill a plant look at all of the the time invested to grow them especially plants from plant keeper like look at that large um plant keeper um ficus lyrata right over here and then there's even a ficus umbellata right over there we've got some type of palm tree it's it's just massive everything around this this plant nursery is massive and i hope you guys are you know enjoying this video so far being able to see such large plants you know when we look at plant nurseries oftentimes we see them in planters but to see them in a um, you know staged in a in, in a way where it looks like a jungle is awesome. I did want to pan over here and show you this beautiful ficus triangularis. Um, I've shown this at the last video, but look at how tall it is. Look at how stable it is in terms of just the variegation right next to this ficus Audrey right here. And then we have a Dracaena Song of India. Um, this can actually get really large as well, but look at how beautiful the um, cream variegation is. And look at this white poinsettia. I actually want to buy this poinsettia just because look at the variegation on the leaves as well. 
Um, and then just the white is just awesome. Um, I would definitely grow that in my collection and it's just a really nice touch next to this ficus um, triangularis. Love the ficus triangularis, but this, you know, ficus is a little bit more finicky. And then I wanted to pan over here. So, you know, you, um, plant foldies. I love me some aglonemas and this one is an aglonema cutlass. I definitely want to get this plant. I wish they did carry a little bit smaller variety of this or at least smaller pot, but nonetheless, I'm not complaining. I might end up just um, pulling the trigger and buying that eventually. And then right over here is a classic Aglonema Silver Bay um, plant keeper incorporated has some of the best aglonemas especially for large aglonemas you will not find these aglonemas and oftentimes these aglonemas when you are um, trying to buy them in like plant nurseries they are in the hundreds of dollars but i will say plant keeper incorporated has some really good pricing so just definitely check that out in person and then we have some sansevarias or snake plants right over there we've got some more ficus lyrata you know you'll hear me talk about ficus lyrata because they've got a lot of ficus lyrata or fiddle um, leaf figs um at this plant nursery and then we have some bird of paradise right over there on the right We've got another ficus audrey. They've got a lot of ficus audrey actually at this location. And typically you don't see a lot of ficus audrey being offered anywhere. So that's really awesome. And then we have a bunch of their smaller plants. So you can see they've got a lot of epipremnum arium, neon pothos. Right over here, they've got selections of dracaenas right over here. They've got um, a different type of sansevaria. They've got bromeliads. They've got hanging baskets. They've got a legit um pothos enjoy hanging basket yay for that because that is one of my favorite plants and can you imagine growing a pothos enjoy on a six feet um totem look at you know can you just imagine how large those leaves are and that white creamy variegation that's just amazing but you know that large pothos that was on a totem that's what it looks like in its juvenile form but if you grow it up a totem a moss pole or let it attach to something it can get large large leaves and then right over here is a uh, plant foldies favorite or, or at least according to my viewers everybody really likes it you're seeing a tornado we've got some sansevaria fernwood right over there my favorite sansevaria alongside with the sansevaria la rubia which i found at plants um, and planters in richardson texas and then right over here is an aglonema ruby i am definitely gonna buy me an aglonema ruby look at how beautiful the colors are on that and you know that's a slower growing aglonema so it's just nice to be able to go Go to plant keeper incorporated and buy uh already established mature plant like look at that one right over here that is another aglonema ruby i actually want to get that one as well just because the foliage is a little bit darker and i am all about that dark foliage so we might check it out if i don't get it today and somebody doesn't snatch it i will get it next week because i do plan to visit garen and um plant keeper to just keep you guys updated and maybe just take time and actually talk about care tips um for the video versus just walking around and just kind of <laughs> rambling about why this place is amazing and how you all should definitely visit it and like look at this beautiful epiprenum arium neon pothos and that's the thing about their plants there's really all of their plants are incredibly healthy pest free and they are just gorgeous guys i mean i just want to shout with joy and it's just i don't know plant foldies to actually have live premieres every night i mean i did miss um was it tuesday night but just to have this or like monday night just to have this available for you guys to see i love talking about plants and sharing my love for them like right like over here we have an aglonema i believe this is an aglonema valentine i could be wrong but look at how beautiful those um the foliage is right over here and look at how large that aglonema is so for anybody who is not about that so this is um actually aglonema very red and it is very red um i i will say definitely give aglonema a chance to grow in your collection i know that aglonemas alongside with all of the plants i usually feature like diphenbachia sansevaria um dracaena they're just underrated plants and then right over here we have some another ficus lyrata gorgeous looking ficus lyrata the thing about ficus lyrata or what i've actually realized is they're not as finicky as what people say they don't like to be moved around a lot so once you actually have them established in a home keep them there because if you move them around sometimes they have a tendency to drop their leaves so just a little tidbit about a ficus lyrata or a fiddle fig uh tree 
and we have some more plants here so everywhere you turn there's just massiveness everywhere and then they do have a bunch of tables with smaller plants but as you can see the larger plants are really what um, draw me into this uh, plant nursery and then we have a bunch more of aglonema so when I visited it, um, this one is actually an Aglonema Juliet. I don't really see any more Aglonema Romeos, but basically Aglonema Romeo and Aglonema Juliet are very similar. The only difference is Aglonema Romeo has a little um, less narrow in the leaf shape, but um, I actually like the Juliet as well. And I intended to get Juliet today, but I'm actually gonna hold off since I'm gonna go ahead and buy Ruby. And then right over here, we have some smaller Calatheas. This is a Calathea ornata, but look at how perfect the Calathea looks. Um, you won't really find this type of Calathea out at a big box store. So again, I'm just fe I feel very fortunate to be able to shop at this local plant nursery. Um, and then just the people that run it, Garen and the team here, which is just a two man team, um, they do an amazing job. They do all the watering, they do all the plant styling, they do all of the plant upkeep. It is a whole operation and I love it. Right over here is an Aglonema of Sparkling Sarah. I got this the last time and it is doing very well for me. Love their Aglonemas just because they are super lush. I might actually end up getting an Aglonema super red or very red just because I love that color. I love pink plants in general. So um, that is definitely a shoe one to add to my collection. It's a very nice Aglonema. Now with Aglonema, if you are new to this channel, Aglonema, all they need is bright and direct light people say that they are low light tolerant what that means is you can grow them in lower light conditions but what will happen is they'll end up getting leggy and then their growth will really slow down so definitely give them bright indirect light you'll get the best uh, coloration as well and then we have a bunch of white Philanopsis orchids that are about to bloom or starting to bloom love that as well I definitely want to add a Philanopsis orchid to my collection and then right over here we have an Aglonema Silver Bay. I don't know what this is. This Aglonema is something, it is not an Aglonema Silver Bay. Um, and it doesn't have a plant ID, but I actually wanna buy this one as well just because I really like the, um, the really thick green um, outlining of this plant. So if you know the plant ID for that Aglonema, please let me know in the comments or even in the live chat. That's one that I have been curious about for quite a while. And then right over here, we're gonna walk past this Ficus Lyrata again. Um, for my plant foldies that have um, been to Plant Keeper, please leave in the comments what your favorite plants are, what do you like about Plant Keeper. And then for the ones that are just watching the live premiere right now, let me know what plants you wanna see them feature or actually get in their plant nursery. Um, I would like to be able to give that feedback to Garen and the team. I know that I had to ask Garen to get some more Aglonemas for sure, and he has been able to get some. And right over here, we are looking at some Philodendron. This is a Philodendron White Knight. And um, so they have some of these smaller, rare Philodendrons, but you know, I think the sheer beauty of the larger Philodendron or just larger plants in general, I think that that's what Plant Keeper is really known for. And then look at all of these beautiful orchids right here. This just looks like a jungle. Um, I will say that multiple times, but this looks like a jungle. Like look at that rap, um, rapis um, palm right over there. That's awesome. I actually like that, the look of this palm. And these are a, a massive 20 feet tall at least. It's just growing. So I'm just, I'm, I, I am speechless when it comes to that. And then there are some more assorted Philanopsis orchids right over here. Like I really like this yellow. And when you put the yellow right next to the purple, they really do contrast each other. Super cool. Um, I probably should get a Philanopsis orchid from Plant Keeper as well, just because they are super healthy and they do get these source from a really good um, plant nursery. So yeah. We'll see what I end up doing. Obviously, you guys will get updated with it. So I hope everybody is enjoying the plan videos I've done so far. I know that they are a little bit long. I purposely see me make them at least, you know, 50 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Just because plant foldies, we always have a plant um, party. And um, during the live premieres, we just chatted up. So it just gives us more time to chat on the live premieres. So if you're new to this channel, guys, um, be sure to you know actually join the live premieres don't be shy you can ask questions interact i've already gotten a lot of these you know a lot of plant foldies that are regulars and i truly appreciate that i've got a lot of canadian viewers so shout out to all of the canadian plant foldies 
I hope you guys have a plant nursery like this. Plant Keeper Incorporated is amazing. And if you're ever visiting the Dallas market again, please make a trip to Plant Keeper Incorporated, buy you some plants, there's just a bunch to buy. I did want to show you this plant right here. I don't know if it's some type of Dracaena or a palm, but nonetheless, it is gorgeous. And then you can see the um, the leaves just get illuminated of that um, bird of paradise. I really like the look of that as well. Um, again, you know, as far as the plants here, they just have the best lighting conditions they can possibly give. Like, look at how massive these Aglonema Madonnas are or Golden Madonnas. These are much larger than what you would see at a typical like big box or obviously and even a local plant nursery in Dallas. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be able to get this shipped or I don't know if they do ship. But, you know, um, this is <laughs> this is an Aglonema I'm thinking about also getting. I just don't have the space for it. So for my plant folies who have been watching my channel, you know, thank you so much always for like, you know, going into the live premieres. Um, for hitting the like button again I can't stress enough um, how much it helps by just simply hitting the like button on my videos and just leaving a comment that just really drives engagement with YouTube and when you have engagement you are um, pushed to more people and I really want to grow our plant community um, so they can see plant nurseries like this like I'm super excited that I was able to film all of these plants um, I'm not going into full detail I'm just literally just showing you guys all of these plants again um just enjoy what you see let me know what you think um this is just amazing there's just so many you know positive things i can say about plant keeper but the one thing i will say is the people that run it are amazing people like you can ask garen any of these questions about plant upkeep how to propagate plants or just even the plant ids he knows everything um he runs this um like a boss and i love it um, I did look at this Squamiferum again, this on a, on a totem. I actually was tempted to buy this, but again, I need to find space for it. I, I don't have the biggest house. I am excited that I have my own home and I own it. Um, and I have a bunch of plants already, but that's one that I wanted to show. And then this is another totem that I saw. Um, this one's actually in a um, smaller totem or not as tall, but this is some type of skin dapsis not 100 percent sure what type of skin dapsis this is so i'm going to try to do my research and get the plant id for you in the you know when i actually edit this video with the plant ids and again plant foldies let me know what you guys think about the plant ids just being shown on the screen i know a lot of you guys want me to do that um just because it's teaching you about plant names i'll continue to do that but i will tell you it does come with a cost in terms of just how long it takes to edit a video but nonetheless if I am able to get all of the plant IDs, I will definitely do that. If I'm in a rush to edit a video, sometimes I might skip through that. For the most part, if I do like a big box store plant shopping video, um, it's really the same type of plants we'll see. But this is really more important for me to get these plant IDs out for you guys. So this is some type of euphorbia in a hanging basket. And look that it's about to start blooming. So I really like the look of that. Um, we asked Garen if this was um, for sale and he said no because this is one of these plants that they've had for a while. And that's the exciting part about Plant Keeper Incorporated, especially for someone like me who has been visiting this for the last four years. Just seeing these smaller plants develop into these massive plants is amazing. And it just goes to show that this plant nursery does take care of their plants 150%. I never really see any unhealthy plants. They all look um, gorgeous, healthy, lush, full. All of the adjectives you can possibly name a plant, they've got it, or at least the positive ones. Um, but you can see that they've styled even that totem in the corner so to where it looks like it's like, you know, crawling up a tree. You know, most of these aeroids typically are epiphytes. So in the, the, you know, in the jungle, they actually find some type of tree to crawl up. And then that's how they just start to um, get really large in their leaf size. So when you see like stores that sell, you know, plants like that at big box stores, you're really only seeing a baby or juvenile version of the plant. You don't really see the maximum beauty or the natural um, habit of it growing on something like a totem until you go to Plant Keeper, for instance. But we can see right over here, we've got some type of banana plant. 
Um, so a yucca cane right over here on the right, another type of palm, some uh, Monsera deliciosa straight ahead. Lots and lots of plants um, to see. And the thing about it is, I am curious to see of all the plants you've seen so far on this plant tour, are you guys a bigger fan about the, um, the, the totems? What do you think about them? Because we're about to go see the ph uh, Philodendron Pink Princess totem. Are you a fan of, um, you know, plants growing up a totem? Would you buy that if that was available at your local nurseries? Um, or is it just more of like an arboretum type botanical type garden to have them grow on a pole? I, I mean, I love this. I saw this last time and look at how pink this philodendron pink princess leaf is. And look at how large the leaves are. You know, we see a bunch of philodendron pink princess now being available at big box stores, but they are nowhere near the plant um, leaf size as this one. This is absolutely stunning. This is a philodendron pink princess I wish I could buy and put into my home. I wish I had the space for it. I also wish I had the money for it because you know, these totems are a little, are going to be a little bit pricey, but I mean, who do you blame? It takes a while to develop these um, plant totems. So I just want to make sure that if anything, we can all just admire the beauty of it, either through a screen or if you are in the Dallas Fort Worth market, just visiting Plant Keeper Incorporated. They're super welcoming. Don't be shy. Definitely check them out. And if you do watch this video and just discover this and have the inkling to go to Plant Keeper Inc., please tell Garen I said hi. Like he is awesome. I've known him for years and we, we love talking about plants and just the fact that he's been able to let me just film all of these plants so that way I can provide these types of plants for all of our plant foldies all over local, international. Um, it's just really exciting. I did want to show you this. Look at this philodendron pink princess. I actually am a fan of the darker leaves. Like, um, even if it were to just revert and not have any pink, I could totally vibe with that. But you can see this philodendron pink princess has some beautiful variegation and those leaves are large. I love the Boncera Deliciosa right next to it as well. It gives it a different type of contrast and color. And obviously this Epipremnum Arium Neon Pothos, this one was featured in the last video. And when you talk about a plant that is actually maturing, we talk about fenestrations, look at this. Look, it's starting to fenestrate. If you were to grow this up even taller and let it attach on a totem, like if it went up to like 20 feet, can you imagine how much more fenestration it could get? I would love to be able to get a um, pothos like this. I really want to get one where, you know, like a marble queen pothos or an enjoy pothos with all of that white cream variegation. That'd be awesome. But nonetheless, this is a massive plant. Like look at how tall it is and look at how neon it is. It definitely is a showstopper. And then right over here, we have a ficus melanie, ficus elastica melanie. And I just realized, look at these beautiful Sansevieria la rubias, my favorite type of Sansevieria because look at how beautiful the leaves are. And that's actually a large form of it. So I saw that at plant keeper, or not plants at planters, they had a smaller six um, inch planter, but this one was a little bit like this one right here i believe plant keeper incorporated carries it in an eight inch one so and then right over here we have some euphorbia that is about to bloom as well so trying to show you guys that they also have succulents and cacti available at this plant nursery so they just have a variety of different types of plants to look at and um, that's the thing i really enjoy is just the diversity of plants that they have and then just the quality of plants they have over here they've got philodendrons they've got different types of aeroids cacti succulents um they even they even have some bonsai in this place as well and um i haven't been to the back part of their nursery they have a private nursery in the back so the next time i visit i'm definitely going to feature that but i just can't get over this neon pothos has anybody been able to successfully grow a neon pothos this large up like a moss pole a plank please let me know in the comments and then just please let me know in the comments if you are a fan about the the totems i would assume you guys would be like right over here i've never seen this um still since i went to plant keeper this is a monstera sub pinata look at how gorgeous that is and i just love how like the texture of the leaves it's a, it got a very dim you know um delicate look about it but nonetheless absolutely stunning if you are a monstera fan that is um something you want to see in person and right over here we have a ficus um altissima and then this beautiful ficus benjamina right over here this is a full-blown tree full-blown tree growing 
this is what happens when you grow it and it, it's given the right lighting conditions and care growth it is a full-blown tree you know ficus benjamina have a tendency to actually drop its leaves if it's not happy but clearly this one hasn't it's actually just um gotten more lush and has grown so much Right over here, we have a philodendron sanadu, beautiful looking philodendron sanadu. That bright plant on the bottom is a Dracaena um, Song of India. I wish we could see more of those in big box stores. I haven't as of late. We've got some type of alocasia, and we've got some more philodendron, um, not philodendron, Dracaena um, Song of India is right over here. We have another type of variegated cactus really like this as well and i do love the um dracaena song of india it's a little bit more finicky than the typical um dracaena however and it does require lots and lots of light it's not as um low light tolerant it will definitely shed its leaves if you um don't take care of it so that, that's the philodendron um song of india and then we just have this uh, this is another aglonema i was eyeing that's an aglonema ruby right over there and then we've got a ficus elastica taniki but look at this ruby right here um debating on whether i want to get that one as well i definitely want to get a ruby maybe even two and then we've got some more bromeliads right over here love the bromeliads you know whenever I see this these type of bromeliads i just think of somebody taking a spray paint you know spray painting some red or pink um <laughs> i just think it's funny but those are really nice i do like the variegation as well and i did want to go point out look at how gorgeous that um, philodendron green imperial is and then we have some more plants right over here and i really didn't even realize that this is an actual fish um, with a planter holding i believe it's some type of alocasia but that green um massive plant right there is i believe a philodendron green imperial garen let me know if that's correct and then we have a um, fern right over there fern tornado as well we got an aglonema silver bay around the corner but i don't know you guys just let me know what you think of so um the plants so far like look at this monstera thai constellation and that's the interesting part we've been seeing a lot of monstera thai constellations at local nurseries but they've been sold but they're not really selling them as large as these i know there's another nursery called Ruballs um off of farmer's branch in dallas that have large monstera thai constellations as well but i would say plant keeper has probably the best ones in the dfw market so if you want a large monstera Thai constellations now is your chance and then right over here i believe this is a philodendron prince of orange let me know if that's the correct plant id but look at how large the leaves are i love how the new leaves unfurl and has orange and we have another type of alocasia i believe that is an alocasia silver um, regal regal shields and then this is a ficus um ali really nice looking ficus as well i love the leaf shape it's very delicate looking and then we have some more um philodendron right over here i don't want to mess up the plant ids but i know that this one this green one right here is a philodendron green imperial so um for all of the for all of the plant foldies just look at your philodendron you're growing in your home and imagine it growing to this if we just give it the right proper you know um care conditions um, I, I'm excited for that. I, I definitely want to get a Diefenbachia now, a Diefenbachia Sublime, because look at how bright the variegation is. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, what else do we have right over here? We've got another, oh yeah, this is actually the first time I've ever seen this. My, one of my favorite, um, Epipreneurium gold, um, global green pothos. This is a global green pothos grown on a totem. Look at that green on green variegation. Absolutely stunning. I've actually wanted to try and grow my um, global green pothos up a boss pole, but I never just had the success because look at this. Now, global green pothos, they've really got smaller leaves. So just to see these leaves this size is amazing. You can see that um, the leaves, when they're not attached to something, grow like that and it's a little bit smaller smaller but you can see that the ones that are actually attached to the totem those leaves have really sized up in size so um you can see that the leaves started out small but as it grows up that totem it gets larger and larger and the trick is for any plant that's growing and you want to see it actually mature you know into larger leaves the le the, the nodes the aerial roots have to attach to whatever 
you know, it is, whether it's wood, it's, um, it, it's like a moss pole, a plank, it definitely needs to attach to it. And what some people do is they'll use like a spray bottle and make sure and spray and miss the aerial root. So it'll attach to the wood. Just a little tidbit. Um, I'm just really excited that I finally got to see a global green pothos with such large leaves. I believe if I were to grow like an Epipremnum arium enjoy, it would have um, the leaf size like that, which is not bad at all. I actually am considering buying that global green pothos on a totem. It's one of my favorite plants. And you can see right over here, we have another Hoya um, compacta in a hanging basket. And then we have some more Hoyas right over here. Um, I'm starting to really like Hoyas. They, for me, they're actually easy care. I don't have to water them nearly as much. And um, that's basically it. I haven't had any pest issues with them as well. You can see right over here, we've got some pothos. We've got some lipstick plants right over here. We've got some more pothos. What else do we have here at Plant Keeper? We've got this Philodendron Fuzzy Petiole. Love that. And then we have a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. We've got some type of Diphenbachia right over here. This one I haven't really seen often. Not sure what the full plant ID is, but I know it's a Diphenbachia. And then we have some more um, plants right over here. We've got a Philodendron Silver Sword growing up just a little pole. And what else do we have here? We've got another um, Philodendron Silver Sword on a trellis. So you can notice that the, the leaves are starting to really size up. We've got a Sansevieria Fernwood. We've got a Philodendron Hope right there. And then this one right over here is another Philodendron um, Silver Sword. And you can see that the leaves are really starting to get large as it is growing up that trellis. So just FYI on that. And then we have another Aglonema Silver Bay right here. Monstera Adansonii. We've got a bunch of succulents right over here, just a bunch planted. And you can see that that's a Kalachoe. And then we have a Shiflera um, Amato. Really like that as well. And then we have some type of Dracaena. This Dracaena actually looks a little bit thirsty, so they'll probably need to water that. And then we have an Aglonema Silver Bay, another Aglonema um, Ruby. So definitely am going to get a Ruby. I think just the size of it is actually awesome. And then what else do we have here? We have a, another type of Dracaena. But what I find interesting is, does anybody know the plant ID for that Dracaena? Because the new growth is actually much more narrow. And then we have some some bonds I read over here, smaller plants just featured, and then the Texas flag, and then also um, that type of um, palm right over there. I like that. This is a philodendron red imperial again, and then this is a philodendron um, moonlight. So they're both nice looking philodendron. I would say it'd be awesome to see a philodendron moonlight get as large as that philodendron red imperial. And then right over here we have an aglonema stripes next to an aglonema um, ruby. What else do we've got going on here? I just keep panning all over. So if you guys see any plants that you guys are interested in, please leave that in the comments. You know, ask me questions. Like I really thought that was a philodendron black cardinal, but it is not. According to Garen, that is a philodendron um, red imperial. There you go. But you can see we have some more snake plants here. Um, does anybody actually grow snake plants as an exclusive collection? Like, is that the only thing you grow in your um, house collection? I know that there are different niches. Um, I am more of just all around, although I will say I'm more partial to these plants that I'm looking at. And that would be the Aglonema, um, that Sansevieria um, Fernwood. Those are just easy to care for plants. And then that Dracaena Song of India, that one's a little bit more finicky, but you can see a juvenile form of a Janet Compacta. And then this one right over here, Dracaena Janet Compacta, and that one is a Calathea lancifolia. We've got some type of Hoya attached to this, um, this bendable pole. So I really think that's cool. And it's actually taking a different type of leaf shape with that now that it's on a um, bendable pole. So we're just gonna keep looking at all the other plants here. You can see they've got a variety of aglonema. I actually want to, I want to actually buy that aglonema too, that aglonema golden madonna. And then we have some um, some succulents. We've got another um, Sansevieria fernwood. We've got some type of euphorbia right over here. Nice looking one. We've got a Dracaena tornado, um, some type of syngonium. And then what else do we have right over here? 
look at that in the background to that one totem of that uh, philodendron brantianum is just stunning and then we have some more plants that are growing like this is really cool this is a philodendron moonlight we've got a beautiful philodendron birkin that just unfurled um, in almost white leaf and then we have some philodendron cordatum so the one over that i've shown you the philodendron cordatum i'm um, actually can get really large in size and look at this this is a philodendron birkin but look at how white the leaves are i have never seen just a fully white leaf that is awesome obviously with white leaves or white variegation if it gets too white you definitely want to trim it back because plants need um, green to be able to photosynthesize and get that chlorophyll and then right over here we have an epipremnum panatum baltic blue growing up a moss pole and then right over here we have a hoya quintiana um, this hoya quintiana is basically a variegated um Wyetii. i think that that's how you pronounce it so that's really cool and then look at this tiny ficus umbellata i thought this was really cool and then you know with ficus umbellatas they definitely get large in size i'm so glad i was able to find one at home depots for a really good price it was like 29.98 and then right over here we have another um philodendron um, bathophyllum or however you pronounce it but that one's really cool as well um, so there's just a lot of plants you know we have the smaller plants that i want to feature i know we've been looking at the bigger plants this one right over here is a monstera adansonii growing up, up, up a pole and you'll see that as it grows up the pole the leaves start to upsize I really like that cute penguin that the cute penguins they have over here as decoration it's kind of quirky but i really like it and then we have some norfolk pine um, and then we have another table just full of plants. So they've got a variety of different types of aglonema, sansevieria. They've even got some like poinsettias. But all the plants that, you know, you can find at a big box store, they are here. And I will, you know, go out on a limb and say they are definitely a million times healthier than what you would find at a big box store. Like, look at this golden papaya aglonema right over here. That's really nice. And then we have some more aglonemas um, right over here as well. Um, gotta love the aglonemas again with aglonema do not overwater them that's the fastest way to kill them otherwise they are indestructible and look at how beautiful this dracaena hurricane or slash tornado is i have i got one actually at this location and it's doing fine i actually got some new growth from it and then we have some more aglonemas here like look at that pink color it's just stunning and then right over here we have another alocasia somebody please leave in the comments what this alocasia is because i often see that at home depot and i'm not 100 percent sure um what else do we have we got some more aglonemas and we've got some raven zz's we've got some regular um zz's right over here just lots of easy to care for plants like this is a small um fernwood sansevieria or snake plant that one you can actually just put in a bathroom with no light and it will still grow one way or the other it will just be a little bit slower growing but it definitely will not decline it in its health and that's the thing i like about some of these plants is lower light tolerant plants they just you know they just make things easier because you know not everybody has bright indirect light like a plant keeper and you can see this whole table they've got some um ufo plants right over here i was actually tempted to buy one of those they've got a really cool bromeliad with a red bloom love that and they've got crotons they've got some mame crotons as well and then we look at this bonsai this ficus bonsai really nice looking um ficus bonsai and then we just have more plants here this one is a croton petra so i like that as well and the thing about crotons again is you don't want to overwater them their coloration is really influenced by the amount of light you give but as you pan over here look at how beautiful these um, bonsai trees are they've been there for years i've seen them since i first started going here in um, 2020 especially during the pandemic i just definitely wanted to be around a lot of greenery and that's the thing right if you were to actually walk into this um, plant nursery you cannot understand how relaxing it is and just how beautiful it is to see that like right over here i i um, i think that's a dracaena but we do have a bunch of smaller plants so they've got a lot of pothos plants right over here now with pothos they can definitely tolerate lower light conditions um what else do we have right over here we've got a massive aglonema golden madonna i've never seen one this size look at how large the leaves are and they just keep doing it they just keep getting large you know large 
plants at plant keeper like i don't know how they do it and look at how gorgeous this aglonema is right over here like look at how dark the foliage is like it makes me want to buy this one as well that is another aglonema ruby i might just end up buying a couple of them you know, who knows and then we've got a pachira aquatica um our money tree plant and then we just have some more tall plants right here we got a ficus lyrata we've got some um raphis palms and we've just got a lot of you know these trees that grow indoors that you can grow indoors now mind you if you do end up getting a tree from plant keeper make sure you are ready and make sure you're able to speak on your um, plant care tips because like i said again garen and the team don't necessarily want to sell plants just to somebody that's going to kill them or who's not open to learning it's all about learning about plants so like even for me I have so much to learn in terms of plant care, and that's why I love it when plant foldies, my viewers and subscribers add um, comments to my videos letting me know about plant tips, like right over there. Actually, I wanted to show you that that is an aglonema BJ Freeman. It's an uncommon one, or I haven't seen that in a while, and then I wanted to pan over here and show you this aglonema cut list. I really just wish it was in a smaller variety or smaller pot, but nonetheless, I might end up just getting that as well at some point just because... I mean, there's not really a risk buying from um, Plant Keeper. I've never had a plant really die on me. They've got very, very healthy looking plants and they are priced well. Like I actually have bought a lot of my plants from Plant Keeper, the ones you will see in my um, house tour video at some point. But look at this beautiful Monstera Deliciosa. We've got another palm right over here. Um, just all sorts of jungle, um, just this jungle look. Um, and let's see what else do we have. I'm just going to pan over here and show you guys anything else that I may have missed. I know that I'm going to go um, on a ladder just to show you guys the massiveness of this plant nursery. But before we do that, we're just going to keep going back and passing by a bunch of these other um, plants. Like, look at how beautiful that ficus lyrata is in a tree form. Now, remember with ficus lyrata, it definitely requires a lot of bright and direct light. And then this is actually really cool. I, it's some type of ficus. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in and see what kind of ficus it is. But I know it's some type of ficus. Not 100% sure what it is, but nonetheless, it's got some beautiful green leaves. I love the round um, leaves of it. The texture is really nice. And we have another raphis palm, a dracaena lemon light. Um, I really like that as well. And then we have some more majesty palms right over here. Can't get over these palms are all over. Um, you'll find them everywhere. And then, then here's another table with a bunch of smaller plants. So we've got a Sansevieria moonshine. We got some Phalaenopsis orchids. We've got another, um, what else do we have over here? We have, a uh, um, some Sansevieria, some snake plants, um, yeah, some more snake plants. We've got a Dracaena tornado right over there. Super cool plant, actually. We've got an Aglonema silver bay right here. And we've got some Marantha hanging baskets, but these are variegated Marantha, so that's really cool. Or not Marantha. Yeah, I think that's Marantha. Yeah, prayer plants. So definitely like that. And then we have some white Philanopsis orchids. We've got some ponytail palms right here. They didn't really know that ponytail palms are actually a succulent and not part of the palm. Um, the palm family so i find that interesting um what else do we have here um we've got this aglonema right over here i actually was thinking about getting this aglonema um this one has some really light texture on the leaves really like that as well and i just like how it's very delicate it looks like it was sun stress definitely thinking about getting that aglonema as well as you guys can see i am a huge fan of aglonemas um, i'm not going to deny it some people um, are not it's not for them you know some people might think that aglonemas just have too much stark colors but you know that to each his own i love aglonemas and i also love this spider plant right over here it has a couple of babies already trailing away and we've got a money tree right around the corner and then we have some more ficus larata or fiddle fig tree leaves like look at how large the leaves are they're about 20 feet tall um, so if you want a well-developed um, ficus larata or fiddle fig tree definitely go to plant keeper my plant fold is already on the the live premiere and just i'm um, watching this please leave me a comment and let me know what you think about ficus larata especially the ones that you're seeing at this um, plant nursery um, I actually love that Dracaena marginata. I just love the pink um, as it gets um, illuminated by the light. And the same thing with these Dracaenas right here. Who would imagine that they would have such delicate 
lines and the same thing with the sansevieria fernwood i really like that but this is absolutely stunning it looks like um fireworks um to me and you can see right next to the fireworks is just a bunch of um other smaller plants like those sansevierias that i saw calathea ornata and then just panning out over here like look at all of those plants i'm gonna go ahead and slowly go up this um this uh this ladder but we can see this is actually a global green pothos that has been trailing down and you can see that the leaves actually it's interesting if you let a plant trail down the leaves get smaller but if you let a, a a um, plant actually grow up a pole the leaves get larger i just find that interesting you can see that um there's a bunch of trailing plants right here we've got some um string of hearts that are just trailing down and then you can see that there is some type of hoya right over there in a hanging basket and then you can just see this feels like if you were actually just standing alongside a cliffside and you're looking down a tropical jungle Look at that. And then look at that um, pothos right over there, the, the totem of the pothos. And then look at that large ass. <laughs> and I say ass, that is a huge, huge plant there. But that um, that pothos right over there, that neon pothos, it just illuminates its space. And then we have just a, um, you know, a regular jade pothos, golden pothos right over here and a string of hearts. Um, I just wanted to go stand right over here and show you how large this um plant nursery is i'm gonna go ahead and go down this ladder and see what else we can find in terms of plants look at that um dracaena um, tornado or hurricane mature farm and we have another monster adansonia on a trellis right there that's really cute and what else do we have right over here we've got a raffis palm We've got this one right here, this begonia. I saw this begonia last time. It is another type of begonia. I believe this is another cane begonia, but look at how beautiful these um, leaves are. It's got dark foliage with like pink dots. I want one of these begonias. So if anybody knows a plant ID for this type of begonia, please let me know. I would definitely grow this begonia. I would actually choose this begonia versus the begonia maculata. I think this begonia is prettier. I just love the dark foliage leaves. Definitely want to show you that. They don't have as many begonias, obviously, at this um, plant nursery. But nonetheless, maybe they might carry some begonias in the future. Let me know in the comments so I can give that feedback to um, Garen and Plant Keeper Incorporated if you guys want to see that. And I'm just going to pan over here again and show you Look at this philodendron um, squamiferum growing up a pole. We've got some type of Cebu blue, the Cebu blue growing up a pole. We've got a marble queen pothos. We've got an enjoy pothos. Um, we've got an alocasia that we just passed by, raffidifora tetrasperma. And then we're just gonna go back here and just look at these plants again. Um, more hanging baskets. I do like that, um, just that uh, golden pothos right over there in a hanging basket. You can't go wrong with the golden pothos and look at just all of the light that it's receiving. All of these plants are receiving. You wonder why these plants are thriving. I, um, it's not a surprise for me. Plant Keeper definitely just takes care of their plants. Look at that. Um, those white Philanopsis orchids and then just that totem of a global green pothos. Definitely wanted to show you that. Um, if anybody wants to know where the, the origin of a global green pothos is, it's actually from Japan. Um, it was a mutation that was found in Japan and it ended up making it to the United States and just all over the world. Um, but it's just nice to see that uh, totem. I've never seen a global green pothos totem. And then I just want to pan over here again. Um, I, I'm telling you, as I film this, the massiveness of this actual plant nursery, um, the, the camera can't really show that. All I know is I have just really enjoyed showing you guys all of these plants. I wanted to show you this philodendron brantianum again. This is probably my favorite plant of all of the plants I've seen so far. There's so many, like um, I can't really choose just one, but definitely this one is a statement piece plant alongside this um, this global green pothos on a totem. So like for anybody who has never been to Plant Keeper Incorporated, definitely consider visiting um, Plant Keeper Incorporated. It is probably in the top three plant nurseries in Dallas. It's definitely one of my sentimental favorites. I will always support Plant Keeper Incorporated and I will definitely keep filming. I will try to go every other week just to show you guys more plants. But this is Richie at Growfold. I'm going to end this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.